What's up, everybody? I'm Mike. I'm Nick. It's about time we talk about all the hottest things from the last 30 days at Board Game Geek. It's the best of BGG. That's right, it's the best of Board Game Geek. We're gonna talk about the hottest games of the month, some of the news and some personal things that we really, really liked on the site from the last 30 days. So let's go ahead and get straight into the news. So as always, we have new updates for things in the Geek Game Shop, including the Rival Networks, a two-player only version of the networks where you're running your own TV station. And that's a game that we quite like, so we think you should check that one out. And on the Board Game Geek store side of things, we have some upgraded bits, the BGG sets for Raw, Tapestry, Dice Throne, and more that were on their way over last month, and we are happy to report they are now in stock and ready to buy. So go ahead and check those out. Board Game Geek also announced that the beta version of the Board Game Geek app is now out on iOS that people can try out. Now, if you're an Android user, don't worry, they're gonna do the iOS first, then Android's gonna come after that. So this is gonna be an app version of the Board Game Geek website. You can browse around games, you can follow subscriptions, look at the hotness, all that good stuff. And coming soon is gonna be forum posts and being able to log your play. So keep an eye out and test it out if you want to. Some of the Spiel Jahres nominees have been announced. Now that's the German Game of the Year with the Adventures of Robin Hood, Zombie Teens, and Micro Macro Crime City, which was actually a winner of a bunch of Board Game Geek Golden Geek Awards, have all been nominated for Game of the Year. For Kinder Spiel, which is the Children's Game of the Year, we have Dragomino, which is my first King Domino game. We have Mia London, and we actually have Story Tailors, which we did an in-focus on, which you can check out right here at Board Game Geek. And finally, we have Kenner Spiel, which was the Strategic Game of the Year, and Lost Ruins of Arnok, Paleo and Fantasy Realms all have been nominated. So that was the news. All right, so let's head to that side of the old room so that we can go over the hottest games from Board Game Geek from the last month. So this is gonna be the BGG hottest. So this is based off the hottest games of the month on BGG. Everyone loves to know what the hotness out. So how we make this list is basically we look at the BGG hotness throughout the month and then we rank it from there. And now if a certain game has been on the, the ranking the whole month, that might make it a little bit higher. Right. If it how only, long it's been there, what? If it was a Position flash in the pan, to... it might not make the month. And so right. we kind of smash it together like that. So let's go ahead and get to number 10. So number 10 is a game that was announced called Voidfall that's coming out, which I'm is a pumped. big space 4X game that is kind of modeled toward more Euro game centric folk like us. So it removes in a, in a big 4X game, there might be some random elements and luck elements. So this seeks to remove as many of those and make it more yeah. resource driven and make tight strategic decisions yeah. while keeping all of the, ex the exciting exploratory. Yeah, Davis Kurtersky, you know, tool that I'm like, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here so, for it. Uh, I'm super into it, and Boyfall is number 10. Number nine is Micro Macro Crime City. Now, this game is all over the oh, yeah. place. It like did great in the BGG Awards. It's nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, it's where you have 16 cases that you can solve, and those cases are gonna have some kind of like visual evidence, yeah. kind of like a Where's Waldo situation. There's a bunch of stuff in an image, and you have to sort of find out like, what's what what's important Remember here? I Spy? Yeah. I Spy was great. It's a game. Remember I Spy? Yeah, it's a game that a lot of people thought was really innovative yeah. because of the way it kind of, it, you have all this information, and you're just trying to figure out like, what actually matters here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a really cool Super idea. Super cool idea. I really want to try it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's number nine, Micro Macro Crime City. We'll probably stay on here for a while because, and especially if it wins, it's like got some heat. Yeah, it's doing good. So number eight is Beyond the Sun, which is another space game where people are putting workers it's out. Space, but man. it does all this stuff with tech trees, and yeah. you're trying to kind of collectively guide technology to, for the best of humankind. I love tech trees, and you want to do all the achievements. Yeah, tech trees are really interesting because it's because it's, every tech tree is decisions, and that's always yeah. great in board games. Like in this game, is do you like want to go this way? Do you want to go that way? It's like they show up so much more in video games now, and yeah. I love that. You know, yeah. so it's super cool to have a board game where it's sort of at the center of everything. Yeah. So these tech trees and and deciding. Uh, what kind of things are gonna be available for everybody to use. And you're just trying to have the kind of most achievements and things at yeah. the end of the game. And that's Beyond the Sun. I think it's popped up recently because it's all now on Board Game Arena, yeah. which yeah, makes that it more helps. accessible, <laughs> which means more people can try it and then yeah. rate it. Uh, and that's why it's number eight. 
So number seven probably isn't much of a surprise. It's the Witcher game. The Witcher game that came out on Kickstarter made like two and a half million dollars in like couple a of day. Bucks, couple it's of like bucks. a little indie game, you know, the people who made Untitled Goose game, the game before that was the Witcher, right, you know. Right. You know, it makes sense. But this is a big vast game where you're going around slaying monsters, doing a bunch of Witcher stuff. You have crazy Witcher magic Making and moral choices that are ambiguous. Henry Cavill's on every card, you I know, wish. that kind of stuff. Right. But yeah, this is, I mean, people have been hyped about this game. Oh, yeah. There's been images on it on BG, those images have been like going off the charts. People freaking love The Witcher. I've always wanted to play it, actually. It seems like a cool game. Is a board game version of it? Of course, it's huge. And of course, it's on the hotness. It's number seven. So number six is a new game that started getting people's hands. It's actually the beginning of kind of a series of games called yeah. Destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a game where uh, it's kind of for RPG enthusiasts. Yeah, but if, if you don't have a DM, you, you know? don't have a DM, you don't have someone who has to run it. It's an app-supported game where you're going around and doing these fully story-driven games. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be like a whole series of them and stuff. So this first yeah. one here is kind of like medieval times and everything. But I love the idea. We are really into theme and stuff like that. So I love the idea of a game being really story-driven. Yeah. And using technology with yeah. an app to really be able to immerse you in that story. Yeah, and that's something that Lucky Duck always does. Yes. Like, the people who make Lucky Duck games come from like a tech company, so yes. a lot of their games, all they almost always have like app integration. The always of crime. Yeah, they're things. always really, really cool. So like, any Lucky Duck, I'm like, this is, there's gonna be some innovative stuff in here. Yeah. And this one seems really cool. Seems to be really pushing board yeah. games uh, yeah, forward, yeah. which is really neat. So Destiny's is number six on the hotness. Number five is a game that has been sticking around the hotness because it's getting in people's hands and people are all about it and that is Sleeping Gods. This yeah. is the la I can't latest- it's going anywhere. Right? I know, yeah. right? It's the latest like big story driven game uh, by Ryan Lockett, think like above and below, near and far. And this is one of the games where like, we didn't back it, we wish we had. We gotta, we're gonna have to go get it because it just regrets. seems really cool. But it's like a co-op version of these mm -hmm. kinds of games. Going the stories are always so cool, big campaign stuff. Ryan Lockett's art is gorgeous. It's got one of the best covers in my opinion. I love the cover it's of this awesome. one. awesome. The big sea monster, it's so cool. But yeah, if you like Ryan Lockett games, you like something like Near and Far, but you want a co-op version, which you can do in your Far co-op with the yeah, expansion. This one just goes right for Straight it. Straight into co-op, and honestly, it's I'm so excited to play it. I want to try it so, so bad. But Sleeping God is probably gonna be here for a little bit because it's in people's hands and people are really, really digging it right now. So that's why it's number five. So number four is Oath. We which, just played uh, this. We just played this. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, it's a game where you, it's kind of a campaign or sort of uh, someone said it's a game with a memory. It's a game that morphs. Yeah, a game with it's a, a game memory. That, yeah, uh, memory. So as you play the game, whoever wins gets to make some decisions about certain types of areas and, and uh, kind of game states yeah, for like the next game. And so it's something that like you could you could swap in whoever you want yeah. when you play game to game, but there will be something you don't need to changed. know anything about the previous no. game. Yeah, it's just now the game is this way. Yeah, so yeah. I really love that idea of a game with a memory, a game that will slowly shift over time, but you don't have to have been present for the past. Yeah, you're not like destroying stuff or anything like right. that. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's a big game where you're trying to get your kind of influence out there. You have a kind of the chancellor, which I was playing as, and a bunch of exile people are trying to become citizens and sort yeah. of overthrow the chancellor. Yeah. It's by Leader Games. Um, something that's really interesting. I'd love to play again. Yeah. We played it at six player, which was like sort of overwhelming. A little too much. So it'd be yeah. fun to play it at three or four and like really sink yeah. our teeth into. But uh, Oath is a beautiful production. Of course. Uh, and so I'm not surprised to see that it's still here on the hotness doing quite well. Yeah. That's why it's number four. So number three is one of the games that we both want to play so, so, so bad because we love Johnny Pack and that is Merchant's Cove. This yeah. game is also hitting people's hands right now uh. from the Kickstarter, so everyone's talking about it. But this is this really cool game where you're all like merchants in a cove and you're basically trying to sell goods. This is what you're trying to do, but everyone is very asymmetric. And you're yes. basically selling your goods in a completely different way. So you all have like the same end goal. Yeah, but you're like, but someone's like, like blacksmith and someone's an alchemist. Yeah, so you and you, have different things you all have like a, essentially a different mini game you're yeah, playing yeah. and that's how you sell your goods. And it seems so cool and yeah. it's got the Miko art which we love. I'm I want to play it really. I know bad. there's like people going around on ships. There's other people like doing kind of really cool push explosion yeah. stuff. There's like push your luck things and you're all trying to produce goods and sell. It just seems really neat. And from what I hear, despite being so asymmetrical, it's actually fairly accessible. It's as not a like game. root where you're just like you're like it's not super heavy. Well, I guess I'm learning a new game now. Yeah, yeah. which makes it nice because yeah. I love the asymmetry, but that can be a barrier yeah, to getting yeah. into it. So uh, Merchant's Cove is, is as it's getting in people's hands, it usually makes it pop up on the hotness. We're goes. seeing that here. That's why it's number three. So number two is one that seems to be perpetually on it's the hotness as well. It's just here. It's yeah. just here. It's Dune Imperium. It's like this Dune is a very well yeah. loved game. If you haven't known, it's based yep. off of the Dune series. Yeah. Uh, with kind of art and stuff modeled after the upcoming films. Yep. Uh, Timothy uh, Chalamet. Yeah, every, Timothy Chalamet. Every single card. <laughs> it's a game that blends and Oscar Isaac too. Great job. Great job. 
Uh, and it's blending worker placement and uh, deck building yeah. in this one, which seems to be kind of like I the hot mechanic of the you've moment. You've played it. I haven't. Yeah. yeah. It's, I it really want to try really it. Well. I do, yeah. So if you're going to play a card, that will kind of give you access to certain yeah. areas that you can then put your worker and do things. And there's also this really cool thing where the cards you kind of hold back and don't use, you can then use at the end of your round, which essentially, super cool. for a bunch of different effects. So I love the idea of like, I want to play this card or I don't want to play this card yeah. and use it for the end. So it's one that I think is just uh, got a lot of really great great stuff going on with a great theme on top of it. Mm -hmm. And so Dune Imperium just seems People like an evergreen at this point. People love this game. Yeah, yeah. Man, man, man. It's wild. So that's number, number two. two. And number one is here. I don't know I don't know if it ever actually hit the top of the hottest, but it was like it's number two or number three here. every single game of the month. And that is Lost Ruins of R&R. Talk about deck builder with worker placement. This game's also um, available, so it's hitting people's hands more often now. And it's on BGA right now, Board Game Arena. So people yep. are playing it like crazy. It's our favorite game of last year. I love Lost Ruins. We played it like three times this month. Yep. Like Lost Ruins are on is so, so, so good. So good. I absolutely adore it. This is a game where you're like exploring ruins and stuff like that. You're trying to like overcome these guardians, but it's all a game about extending your turn. You're getting resources. Those resources allow you to do stuff. Just that might give you more resources. Where you're trying to like, oh, now I can use these to do that. Okay, cool. Now I can do this. Okay, now I can do this. You're just trying to extend your, your round as long as possible. It's really, really fun. It's really cool. And again, this is one of those games that I think is going to be a modern classic. I really do. I mean, it's just... Right. People love it. It's great. It's so good. Yeah, and Number there's one. also a solo campaign yes, that came out, which right. also hit the hotness on its own. So that's why we kind of combined <laughs> that's right. it yeah, with really each does. other, saying like Lost Ruins is just all. It was really on here twice, ultimately. Yeah, so yeah. that's uh, number one, clearly. Before we go to the Murph Picks, the last thing I'd like to do is talk about the most played games of the month. So this is the games that people logged the most plays of. And there's a lot of games you probably expect them here. Like right. number 10 is Azul, which has 4,678 plays. Makes sense. Quick game, fun game, very generally universally liked. Yeah. Right. We also have Gloomhaven, which you might expect on 5,071 plays. Yeah. Magic the Gathering, let's be honest, Magic the Gathering is probably number one. But in terms of people logging it, it's 5,620 plays. We have Seven Wonders Duel, which came up with 6,400. 44 that plays. Pops, I'm still astonished that it gets played that much. It's so, it's, it's I mean, so I good. like it, but it's just like, Arguably it's just, the best two player yeah. game ever. Lost Ruins of Arnok is also on here with 6,950. Makes sense. BGA, people playing it like crazy. The people are up into Splendor lately. Yeah. Splendor's coming up on 7,466 plays. Yeah. And Ooh. then uh, Terraforming Mars has 7,607. I wonder if people are counting the app plays. Probably. Probably. I do. Yeah. Because that makes a lot more of them. Yeah. Uh, we got Wingspan, makes as sense. you would expect, on 8,222 plays. And then one and two are probably always going to be here at least for a while. We have Marvel Champions with 12,200. But not to be outdone by the crew, which is number one again at 13,359 over 2,000 unique users playing. And that's that. what's crazy that those ones, like 2,800 for those two, and that's how many times those people are playing those games. Yeah. It's nuts. It's a lot of plays. So that was the most played games the last 30 days. So let's go back over to that side of the room for some Murph picks. <laughs> So my pick of the month is actually a bit of news that W. Eric Martin reported on, and it's a Ticket to Ride themed logic puzzle game called Ticket to Ride Track Switchers. So this is uh, a game where you're not playing like cards in the normal Ticket to Ride, you actually have a physical plastic uh, kind of puzzle and a bunch of cards which will give you an order that you need to get your locomotive and ship trains into in a certain amount of moves so that all of your trains leave on time. I love games like this on, on uh, phones and things. There's a lot of app games where you have to get stuff into a certain order so that everything kind of flows. And this is a physical version of that with the fun ticket to ride theming on it. So this is something I think is really neat. I love logic puzzles like this. There's a bunch of puzzles so that you can start off really easy and work your way harder. It's gonna be great for families. And so that's my pick of the month. So one part of BG a lot of people don't know about is that you can actually log your sessions. Now this isn't just logging what game you played. This is actually people who write out what happened in their session of a certain game. A lot of big strategy games, people have this and then they comment and give advice and it's a really cool part of it. And this is the top one of the month where this person played Spirit Island with 36 boards. There was an outer ring of boards and then an inner ring of boards and there were 24 spirits that they were playing. I've played Spirit Island. I can barely handle one spirit, let alone 24. This game was played over nine rounds and took 34 hours to play. And they logged the entire thing in here and talked about it. It's really, really cool. Oh, and they won, by the way. 
So the way we always like to end these is to personally pick just our favorite game that we played last month. So Mikey, what's your favorite game that you played all last month? So my favorite game that I played last month is one that I finally got to play physically again after a very long time, and it's Jaipur, which yeah. is a two-player card game where you are trying to get some set collection the airplane to get these game. tokens. The airplane app. It's perfect on, this, on, on the airplane. app. It has a great app, but I haven't played it physically, and I really enjoy the physical so. game. That's the first way I learned how to play Jaipur, so that's my pick of the month. My pick of the month is Eco's First Continent. We got to play it with the expansion, and we love Eco's First Continent. It's a wonderful John Declare mm -hmm. game that just went straight out of the radar. Try it, it's really, really fun. You're building out a continent together, but it's a competitive game. It's really simple, ultimately, but you're yeah. putting out animals and trying to make the continent look how you want to. It's just really, really great. And not enough people play it, and I like it, and we played with the expansion. The expansion's great, too. John Declare, John Declare can make a board game. He can Absolutely. Make a board game. My guy can make a game. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it for us here uh, from this month on Board Game Geek. Let us know in the comments, though, what are your favorite things? If it's a forum post, a bit of news, games you played, what was your favorite bits of Board Game Geek that you enjoyed over the last month? Hit us up in the comments below. Yeah, Board Game Geek is a huge site, so explore around and find new stuff, and let us know what's cool down in the comments below. Absolutely. Until next time, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. And we'll see you next month. Bye, everybody.